I've gained a couple pounds, actually five since Thanksgiving. <laughs> Studies show that women who gain a few extra pounds live longer than the men who mention it. <laughs> As a speaker, you're supposed to make transitions for everything you do. I have no transition for that. We're going to talk about witnessing this morning, uh, sharing your faith. Most Christians believe it's the penalty for being one. That's because we take on way too much responsibility with it. Our job is just to tell the story. It's God's job to do the saving. Uh, D.L. Moody, the great evangelist, walking down the streets of Chicago and a drunk in the gutter said, Why, D.L. Moody, you saved me five years ago. And Moody said, Yeah, you look like one of my converts, not one of the Lord's. <laughs> Crusade used to say, Share your story and the power of the Holy Spirit and leave the results to God. When you don't have to do the saving, it takes all the pressure off. And this Christmas season is the perfect opportunity to share. Just don't take on more burden than you need. Just tell the story when the opportunity arises. I got serious about my faith when I was 30. Started praying for my unsaved folks. My mom was an alcoholic, spent a little time on the street. Tough case. Came to visit us once. My wife spent the day with her, and when I walked in the door, she said, Son, I'd like to receive Christ. Would you lead me? I didn't have to do anything. You know, some plant seeds, some water, some till. You've heard me from time to time. You know by now that I'm mostly fertilizer. But it all produces fruit, right? And my wife had spent the day with her, and she was ready, and I got to lead her. My stepmom of 25 years, uh, they smoked three packs of Luckies a day back in those days, and she was dying of cancer. I got to pray with her. My second stepmom of 25 years, uh, same situation. Got to pray with her. But my dad, he's tough. He didn't like the church. There were some circumstances coming along. And when I went into the ministry, he didn't like that much. But when I wrote a book, he was proud of that. And he'd buy them by the case, and he'd take a book, and he'd take it to the clubhouse of the mobile home park in Tucson. And he'd leave the book out until someone finally took the book. Then he'd say, damn, Christian's always stealing my books. <laughs> then he'd put another book out there. <laughs> and that's the way he did it. And I, so I, he got tired of me talking to him about Jesus. And I, he said, don't talk to me about this anymore. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Uh, so I had to get creative. So I said, Dad, if I write a book, would you proofread the manuscript for me? He said he would, but he never did. And he was in his mid-80s, and he only had months to live because his lung cancer had caught up to him. And I said, Dad, you've been a gambler and a bookie, and you've been a lot of stuff, but you've always been proud of keeping your word, and you lied to me. He said, Son, I've never lied to you. And I said, Well, you did. You said you'd read my book, and you didn't. He said, Okay, and forgive me, this is my dad now. He said, it takes me about a half hour to sit on the pot every morning. So I'll read a page, use a page, read a page, use a page. <laughs> I said, Dad, whatever, as long as you read it. And so I called him three weeks later, and I said, Dad, how are you doing with the book? He said this. He said, well, I had a little bout with diarrhea, and I was able to get it finished. <laughs> I said... I'll be on a plane. I'm catching a plane right now. I'll be in Tucson this afternoon. We're going to talk. I jumped on a plane from Santa Barbara, flew to Tucson, got to his mobile home, and he said, let's go in the bedroom, get this over with. <laughs> and we went in the bedroom, and 
and he, he wanted to receive Christ. And I said, now, Dad, don't you do this for me. Don't you do this to get me off your back. This is all about you. It has nothing to do with me. And he says, I know I'm going to die in a few months. I know that's going to happen, and I want to be ready. I, I need to trust Jesus. And I got to lead my dad to the Lord. I found that persistent prayer and some creative presentation as the circumstance came up that God could just take care of all the rest. And if you're one of those that think that witnessing is the penalty for being a Christian, well, now is a really good season to just tell your story and leave the results to God.